Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Downfall Creek Bushland Center. You're the group that are here to talk about habitats, aren't you? No worries, I'll just grab my hat, I'll meet you outside. Hi, my name's Catherine and I'm one of the Environment Education Officers who works here in the beautiful Raven Street Reserve in North Brisbane. So the word of the day for you guys is habitat. So what is a habitat? A habitat is any place that an animal lives. Now there's some special things you need to know about habitats. Habitats can be really big, like this reserve, this is one whole habitat, or they can be really small, like a leaf or a rock. We call those small habitats microhabitats. Now generally, the bigger the animal, the bigger the habitat. So you won't find any elephants hiding underneath rocks in here. I know that because there's no elephants in Australia. Hi guys, I'm gonna take you on the creek track now and I'm going to show you an example of a healthy habitat and an unhealthy habitat. So stick to the path, follow me, let's go. Habitats can be healthy and unhealthy. This is an example of a healthy habitat. This is a creek habitat. This is actually down for creek. Now I know it's a healthy habitat because I can see and hear lots of animals. I can see the trees around and lots of grass and healthy looking bushes that are around. The water is nice and clear and there's no pollution. So this is an example of a healthy habitat. We're going to take you now to show you an example of the same creek but in an unhealthy state. Believe it or not, this is Downfall Creek. It is the top end of the Downfall Creek catchment. Downfall Creek, as you see it here, runs all the way through Raven Street Reserve and ends up at Boondall Wetlands down at Morton Bay. Humans have modified this part of the creek into a drain, so therefore damaging this, the, habitat, the creek habitat in this area alone. You can see by looking at the creek now that there's not much life in there and you'll also see the pollution, the pollutants on top of the surface. When we talk about unhealthy habitats, we talk about pollution and rubbish that people left behind. Up in the trees here, we have some rubbish that's left behind by humans. It's a balloon. Balloons can be very damaging to the environment, especially when they land in the waters in our oceans. So instead of releasing a balloon at your next party, why don't you just try blowing bubbles instead? Habitats can be natural or man-made. This is not a nest, this is actually a ringtail possum dray. We have two types of possums in the reserve. We have ringtails and brush tails, but this one is made by the ringtail. Let's have a look at a man-made habitat now. Even if the habitat is man-made, animals will still take advantage of it and live there, especially if it provides good shelter. There's something living in this box right here. Shall we have a look? An animal will only live in a habitat if that habitat provides the five things it needs to survive. Those five things are clean air, water, shelter, food, and a mate. I found a really good habitat for you. This is a termite nest. Have a look up high in the tree. As I said, this is a termite nest. Termite nests are found on the ground and also high up in the tree. Termites are a really, play a really important role in the reserve here. They eat the bark that has fallen down on the ground and they recycle the nutrients, which goes into the soil and then helps the trees to grow. <clears throat> now this is an example of a shared habitat. Not only do termites use this habitat, but so do brush-tailed possums, kookaburras, kingfishers, and lace monitors. So the termites do all the hard work and then everybody else moves in. Some habitats are under the ground. This is a habitat for a trapdoor spider. Shall we have a look? You can hardly see it, it's very well camouflaged. Just gently pry it open.
These spiders are nocturnal, so they'll come out at night. Normally the females are the big ones that live in the traps and they'll hang their legs over the edge of the trap, wait for an insect to come past, they'll grab it, drag it down to the bottom of the trap, and then it shuts like this. Above me here, we have a native stingless bee nest. Australia has about 2,000 species of, of native bees. Only about 11 live in colonies like this. This one's called a sugar bag bee. It's very little, it looks like a little fly. Sugar bag bees produce a little bit of honey, but not as much honey as our, the European bee, which is where we get most of our honey from. And native stingless bees are a really important part of the environment. They're very good pollinators, so very good for pollinating flowers, fruits and vegetables. This vine is called a monkey rope vine, and it's called a monkey rope vine because it likes to climb up trees, just like a monkey does. Trees are really important habitat for lots of different animals. This is a really old tree, and as you can see, there's a couple of hollows in this tree. In this hollow, you'll sometimes find lace monitors, carpet pythons, you might find owls, snakes, lizards, lots of different animals. Hollows take about 100 years to form, so it's really important that we protect our old trees. There's one animal at Raven Street Reserve that you're sure to smell before you see it, and that is our flying foxes. At Raven Street, we're lucky enough to have a camp of flying foxes. The fact that they are here is a good indication that this habitat provides the five things that they need to survive. Flying foxes are a really important part of the environment. They spread seed and they help pollinate our trees. They also like to poo a lot, so we're going to keep moving. Well, that's it for Habitat today. I've really enjoyed showing you around Raven Street Reserve. It really is one of the hidden gems in the middle of Brisbane. I've enjoyed showing you all the habitats that you can find in the middle of Brisbane in a major capital city. So I look forward to seeing you, hopefully, out in the wild one day. Bye for now.